welcome to Real Life Church. We're so glad that you're joining us today and you've taken the opportunity out of your time to be a part of what God wants to do in our lives together. We're going to move into worship in just a moment, but we want to remind you about our giving links as well as our online communication form that you can find in the description right below. So make sure to check those out. Make sure to greet everybody in, uh, along in the message section, and let's enjoy the presence of God and celebrate all that He's doing here in our hearts today. Hello everyone, and what a wonderful time to be able to gather together in the aftermath, the afterglow of the merry, merry Christmas that I trust all of us had, and we're anticipating, continuing to expect the unexpected as God is going to move in our midst. So be sure and let us know that you've joined us, where you're watching from. We want to um, hear from you, make comments. This is interactive. We want to know how God is speaking to your heart. And just a reminder, uh, there are links available to give uh, your tithe and offering as we're winding down uh, 2021, as well as if you want to communicate a praise report or prayer request. We... Uh, we want to make uh, that available to you and accessible. And so with that, can we just ready our hearts to receive, continuing to make room for the King of all kings. Make room in our hearts, Lord. We make room in our mind for your thoughts. We make room in the seat of our desires and motivations, God. We make room for you to move. We make room for you to move, God. We make room for you to move, have your way. We make room for you to move, have your way. Oh, yeah. We're here to worship, here to adore you. In Luke chapter 2, the continuing saga unfolds as Mary and Joseph are in Jeru uh, Bethlehem, excuse me, uh, and she has given birth to Jesus the Messiah, and 
shepherds have unexpectedly received a, a angelic visitation, a message that uh, this miraculous birth has taken place. And so I want to read out of Luke chapter 2, verse 16, and share what occurs. The shepherds hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. They spread the word and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. Verse 20, the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. And that really stood out to me that all the things they had heard and seen, they responded by glorifying and praising God. Now, this is the final Sunday in 2021, and I'm sure there's been some unexpected twists and turns and and challenges that have presented themselves. But you know what? We have all seen and heard God move. There are testimonies represented in all of our lives. And so can we just make that a point of our praise and glorification of God that all that we've seen of his faithfulness, all that we've experienced of his comfort, of his love, of his provision, all that we've seen and heard him doing in the lives of other people, transforming and changing and mending their broken hearts and restoring them to a sound mind. God, we've seen and we've heard so many wonderful things and we're here to adore you, God, and to lay our lives before you. And we're expecting to see and hear more as we approach this time. So can we rally together? Can we unify around this principle as we sing praises to glorify our God? And oh, come, let us adore him. Oh,
Respond. You can even make a comment. You know what? I'm coming to adore the Lord right now. We've scaled back a little bit, but what God really is attentive to is the heart's cry of his people and the heartfelt worship rising up before him.
don't have time to maintain these regrets when I think about the way he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. There's a verse to that song that says that God is jealous for us and that's not from a worldly perspective like oh he's being possessive although he is possessive over us we are his creation we reflect his image but 
Him being jealous for us is that He has a longing to have our wholehearted devotion before Him. And that sometimes we allow ourselves to be devoted to other things, temporary things, distracting things, even destructive things. We can be devoted. We can be giving ourselves over to those distractions, to those destructions. And I just believe even right now, Lord, you just want us to take hold and capture this truth that God, when we behold you, when we will wholeheartedly devote ourselves before you, all of these momentary afflictions and internal inconsistencies are eclipsed by the weight of your glory. So can you just let the weight of his greatness, the weight of his glory right now eclipse whatever affliction, whatever struggle, whatever doubt, whatever inconsistency that you're experiencing right now. Oh, God, we devote ourselves to you and you alone. We devote ourselves to you and you alone. Yeah. I just pray right now, God, that the full weight of who you are, the full weight of your glory would far outweigh all else. Come on, some of you are heavy. Some of you are wearied. Some of you are processing situations and things that were said over the holiday season, over even this year. You're contemplating, you're considering decisions. And come on, you need to be eclipsed by the glory of God right now. Some, some decisions are hanging in the balance and you don't want to misstep. So Lord, we, we come and we close out accounts that need to be closed out in your presence, God, because you far outweigh them all. Oh, you far outweighed all my pain. You far outweigh all my heartache. My heartbreak of you alone can heal. You alone can heal and reveal because he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Let him love on you. searching and seeking reading the scrolls and the prophecies that had been written in Matthew chapter 2 we see this group of magi in pursuit of what had been written that there would be a baby, there would be a Messiah coming and they were being guided and directed by a star as they called it a bright and shining light giving the guidance that they needed and in Matthew chapter 2 we see that they approach Jerusalem and they start inquiring and asking questions about where they could find this baby and there was a deceptive uh, really caustic king ruling at the time and he didn't want any competing affections he didn't want any competing devotion and so he tricked them and said you know what 
I will help you find them and when uh, find him and when you do I, I want to worship him too of course this was not true he was deceiving them but off they go off they go and they find they find him and it says in Matthew 2 after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod Magi came from the east to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. See, when you're searching and seeking, and many people are in this world, it is about worship. We will give worth to something. But they said, we have come to worship him. Of course, this disturbed the king, as I already mentioned. And after the king heard this, they went on their way and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them and until it stopped over the place where the child was. Listen, guide, God will guide us to the right spot. Let that just hit us, right? As we're searching and seeking God, what do you have for me? What is your plan? If we keep following him, he will lead us to the exact right spot at the exact right moment. When they saw that star, they were overjoyed. And on coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary. And they bowed down and they worshiped him. And then they just opened up their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And... I believe that God just wants us to open up on a whole new level, just as they did. Yes, they brought monetary treasures of that are listed there, but our lives are, are what God is after. As he loves us, the greatest response that he's looking for, the greatest gift we can give back to him is our wholehearted devotion, our, our lives laid down before him giving worth to his truth giving worth to his goodness giving worth to his kindness his compassion his consistency that's what we do because Jesus we do we love you too that's our our response response so maybe you've had some closed off areas where you're saying you know Lord I just don't want you to touch that area because it's sensitive I just don't even want to bring you into it because I'm actually embarrassed and ashamed and feel guilty about it I don't want to open this up because it's going to take too much of my energy to have to process it. But see, what, what he knows is we're all searching and seeking. And if we don't open up fully and devote our lives before him, we won't be able to give the worship that he's called us to. you've done we will pour 
pour out our love, this will be a random song. In Jesus, we love you. And oh, how we love you. You are the one our hearts adore. In Jesus, we there's some people that need to release something specific that has caught your devotion and your affections. God, we're here just to reset. Oh, yes. Because everything we give over to you for you to rule over, for you to reign over, for you to restore, for you to make new. God becomes a point of your power being perfected in our lives. So Lord, you know, you know the pain points of people's lives and hearts. You know the family dynamics, God, that have caught our attention and drawn us away, Lord. And we don't intend for it to happen, but sometimes it just does. And so Lord, afresh and anew, we say we are fully devoted to you. Have all of us, Lord, because you 
You do bring those that are hopeless and we can find our hope in you. Those that had been orphaned or abandoned, now we have a home in you. All that is lost can be found and, and have its place in you. And that's why we declare, Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we love you. up in Matthew chapter 2 and actually backtracking into Matthew chapter 1 when Joseph initially receives the message from the angel in a dream about Mary and what she was to bring forth and conceive and, and birth and it says in verse 22 that all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. And so we know the fulfillment of that happens in Matthew uh, chapter two. It's recorded at the beginning of that chapter. And of course that was unexpected. They were expecting, of course, the Messiah, but it came in an unexpected way to unexpected people. And Joseph and Mary even found themselves in an unexpected location. But do you know that all of that, the census that was ordered by which brought them to Bethlehem at that designated time was all to fulfill what the prophets had written. And even as they found themselves in Bethlehem and the various people that had come to visit them have come and gone, it says that an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in another dream. And so he remained sensitive to the Lord and it says, get up, he said, take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for King Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. Now, I'm sure that was pretty unexpected too, right? So not only initially does God, you know, unexpectedly share his words and reveal his will, but even as it unfolds, we can get unexpected details, which seem like a detour, right? But do you know? That as Joseph obeyed, he got up, took the child and his mother during the night. This was an unexpected hardship. They were not going to be able to return home back to Nazareth yet. They weren't expecting it. Now, in the night hours, in the midst of the darkness again, God was going to bring a guiding light. so that they would end up in Egypt. And it says where he stayed until the death of Herod. Now this was probably between two and four years they stayed and remained there. I'm sure hearing of the news that King Herod had ordered the, the directive to kill all of the, of the baby boys, the children under the age of two. The unexpected threat against the Messiah, the living, breathing word of God. And you know what I really felt like the Lord wanted us to know is that we're expecting God to fulfill his word, his will, his ways in our lives, just as they were expecting. But often in the midst of it, there's still the unexpected that we have to navigate through. But every aspect of this was to fulfill what the prophets had written. So every hardship, every 
detour seemingly to them was aligning them with God's prophetic declaration. It was all part of his plan. And let me tell you something, when the word comes, there will be an unexpected attack against the word. Jesus represented the living, breathing word of God made flesh and dwelling among us. And there was a, a, an intentional opposition over his life right here. And we know that that continued on. And so we need to understand that yes, unexpectedly, there's going to be opposition against the word, the living, breathing, active word within us. God's promises, his truth, his plans, his purposes, but they will prevail. Just as God spoke to Joseph and got them out and made a way of an escape and brought them to Egypt. And then after King Herod had died, he let Joseph know, now it's time. You can return now to Nazareth. It goes on in that chapter and says, Get up, take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel for those who were trying to take the child's life are dead. Think of that for two to four years, living under that concern and that tension that someone is after my baby. Someone is after my child. Someone is after my promise. Someone is after the hope, the Messiah of the world. Mary and Joseph had to steward that time before the Lord. And not lose heart and not lose hope and go back and say you know what no word from God will ever fail nothing is impossible if he brought us to Egypt he'll bring us back to Nazareth so of course they got up they took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel and again they were warned in a dream and they withdrew to the district of Galilee and went and lived in a town called Nazareth. Here it is. So was fulfilled what was said through the prophets that he would be called a Nazarene. So every inconvenient juncture <laughs> that they experienced came full circle and it was fulfilling the prophetic declaration and plan in Christ's life and so it will be in ours sometimes we find ourselves and it seems like a detour and it seems like a hardship and we're going to ex experience the unexpected opposition against the word of God in our lives against his his truth against his promises but let me tell you something we have a champion we have a champion and his name is Jesus and he will not fail us he came to model for us and so Lord right now those experiencing opposition against the word against the promises Lord those questioning and and wondering why am I here this seems like a detour this is not what I was wanting or expecting but God, you can use it. And I pray that we will just surrender it to you, God. We don't have to understand it. We just have to surrender it, God. We don't have to understand it. We just surrender it. And we want to steward this time of, yes, maybe great opposition, but you are greater than the opposition. You are the champion of all champions. That's who you are. Are my champion and no word from God will ever fail you are my champion giants fall when you stand undefeated every battle you've won I am who 
You crown me with confidence. I am seated in the heavenly place, undefeated with the one who has conquered it all. And I've tried so hard to see it. Took me so long to believe it. That you choose someone like me to carry your victory. Perfection could never earn it. You give what we don't deserve, and you take all the broken things. Raise them to glory. You are my champion. Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you won. I am who you say I am. You crown me with confidence. I am seen. In the heavenly place, undefeated, with the one who has conquered it all. Oh, you've conquered it
that unexpected package was a champion, was a warrior king who would provide everything that we need to walk out those prophetic plans of the Lord. So Lord, as we close out this time together, this last corporate time of unification, of glorification, sensitizing ourselves to what you would want to release in our midst, God, we go forth knowing that we have a champion, that we can cross over into 2022. We can leave what's needed in 2021 because you are the champion of our lives. And Lord, there's nothing of our striving. There's nothing of our performance, God, that can get us there. It's you. That when we partner with you, when we are obedient as you tell us to be, that nothing of the opposition against the word in our lives will prevail. You've conquered it once and for all. And that's where we cling to Romans 8, that all things can work together for the good of those who are called according to your purposes. That's what we see in Matthew. Jesus was called according to your purpose. Yeah, he ended up in Egypt, ended up in Galilee, ended up in Bethlehem unexpectedly. But you fulfilled what had been written about his life and you will fulfill what has already been written in heaven about our lives and our families and our real life church and this region and this state and this country. So it's with that, Lord, that we keep expecting the unexpected. So just continue to have your way, God. And as we reflect and as we revisit even what was released during this time in this week in between, Lord. 2021 and 2022. Just keep speaking. Just keep leading. And just keep guiding. In Jesus' name. Amen. And I hope that the Lord has spoke something to your heart. I want you to take that thing that God spoke to you today, whether it was in worship or something you heard in the message, write it down and pray over it. Ask God to take that seed that he deposited in your soul and grow it this week. We want to remind you to check out all of our social media content, like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll see you right back here next week at Real Life Church. Thanks for joining us.